Hello, and welcome back to my Q&A video series about the Pandas library in Python. And the question for today comes from a YouTube commenter who asks about two different concepts. Number one, loc, iloc, and ix. When do you use each, differences, etc. And then second, apply, map, and apply map. Okay. Uh, I've already got a video about the first of these two, uh, which I will link to in the description below, and that's a very important concept, how to use loc especially. Uh, but today, we're going to focus on the second, apply, map, and apply map. Now, before we get into the content, I just want to let you know you should stick around to the end of this video for three important announcements, okay? So, let's dig into the content. Uh, as always, we will import pandas as pd, and we need a data set, and we're going to use the training data set um, from Kaggle's Titanic competition. Okay, So http bit.ly slash Kaggle train, and uh, let's go ahead and look at the head. Okay, So each record in this uh, data set represents a passenger on the Titanic, okay? And uh, we're gonna first go through the map method. So there's map, apply map, and apply. So we're gonna start with map. Map is a series method, okay? And here's what we're gonna use it for. Let's say that you need to create a dummy variable for sex. And what that means is I wanna translate sex, which is male and female, into one and zero, okay? So we're gonna use map, and map allows you to map an existing value of a series to a different set of values. So what does that mean? Uh, I'll show you what that, uh, how we do that. Um, we're gonna create a new column called sex num, and so we'll say train.sex.map, and we're gonna pass it a dictionary and we're going to say female colon zero, which means translate or map female to zero, and map male to one. Okay. So we'll run that. And then let's compare uh, sex and sex num. Okay. So I'm going to use the loc method uh, dot loc and say I want to see row zero through four and I want to see columns. Uh, sex and sex num, okay? And what we see is that male has been translated to one and female has been translated to zero. Now, uh, there is actually more you can do with the map method, but what I have just shown you, mapping values, is what it's best for, and so that's actually all I use it for, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and move on to apply. Now, apply is actually both a series method and a data frame method. So we're going to start with apply as a series method. Okay. So what does apply do? It applies a function to each element in a series. Okay. So let's see this in action. Let's pretend I want to calculate the length of each of these strings in the name column. The length of each string and create a new column called name length that contains that integer value, meaning how many characters are here and here and here. Okay, So we're going to use apply for this. And again, we're going to use it as a series method. So uh, we're gonna, our new column is going to be called name length. And we're going to say train dot name dot apply okay len okay so we're applying the len function python's len function which uh, when applied to a string checks the length of that string okay so let's compare name and name length so use dot loc again so first four rows and we want name and name length okay and uh, what we see is that we've now have the name length column. This is 23 characters, this is 51 characters, this is 22 characters, etc. OK? 
Okay, so the apply series, sorry, the apply method, um, when used as a series method, applies this function to this series and outputs the result. Okay, it applies it to every element in the series. Now, notice you do not say len with like parentheses, you just pass it the name of the function. Okay, let me give you some more examples of, of uh, applying. So uh, it's actually relatively common to use apply with like a numpy function, okay? So for instance, uh, let, let's go ahead and import numpy as np, okay? And here's one example. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna look at the, the uh, fare column, and this is the fare in dollars or some currency, and let's say I wanna round it up, okay? So I wanna round this to eight, round this to 72, round this to eight, Etc. Okay, um, I'm going to use numpy ceiling function C E I L. Okay, so here's how we'll do it. I'm going to create a new column called fair seal equals train dot fair dot apply np dot seal. Okay, so let's run that. So I applied this function to this series and saved the results here. And again, let's compare uh, the two columns. Train.loc, um, 0 colon 4, and I want to look at fair and fair seal. Okay? So it was indeed rounded up. Okay? And there you go. All right. Now let's use apply to solve a harder problem. Okay? Let's extract the last name of each person into its own column. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to get the part before the comma. All right, so how are we going to do that? Um, you might think, well, we can probably do this with a string method if you've seen my video on string methods. So um, we're gonna say train.name.stir, meaning string, dot split, and we're gonna split on commas. And I'll go ahead and put head, okay? So I'm splitting name on commas. All right, now this looks very similar to what we saw up here. Uh, Brond, comma, Mr. Owen Harris. Brond, comma, Mr. Owen Harris. But they're actually very different, and this is very important, okay? So up there, it was a string. This has now split it into a list of strings. So the series that is output is a, is a series of Python lists. Each list is uh, made up of strings. So in other words, this is a list of length two, and here's the first element, comma, here's the second element. It actually includes a space right there. Okay, so that comma is not like the comma in the string, that is a comma separating list elements. All right, so we've successfully split it, but all we want is the first part. So how do we just get the first part? What we really need to do is say, hey pandas, I want you to take this result and I want to pull out the first list element from each series element. So I'm gonna actually write a function to do this and then we're going to apply it, okay? So I'm gonna call it uh, get element and you pass it a list called my list and a position, okay? And what happens, it's simple. We're gonna say return my list bracket position. So if I pass it a list and I say position zero, it will return to me element zero from that list, okay? So what are we gonna do now? Well, we're gonna take this, and then we're gonna say dot apply get element and, and say position equals zero. So I'm saying pandas, take this series, apply this function to the result on every element, and pass it keyword argument 
position equals zero. So pass position equals zero to this function I've created, okay? And we'll put dot head on the end, okay? And that actually does it. Here is my series of strings that is just the last names of these people. Now, uh, you might be thinking, um, we could actually do this with a lambda function if you're familiar with lambda functions. And so that's what I'll do. I'll rewrite this. You don't actually need to make your own function called get element for something so simple. Uh, you can actually rewrite this as a lambda function. So lambda x colon x bracket zero. Okay. And that'll do the same thing. Um, if you are familiar with lambda functions, uh, this will be pretty clear. And lambda functions are actually used a lot with apply methods. Okay, so that is, that is it with apply as a series method. Now let's move on to apply as a data frame method. Okay, so we're, for this we're going to use another data set. And uh, I'm going to say drinks equals pd.read csv and bit.ly slash drinks by country, okay? And uh, what we're looking at is a data set of alcohol consumption by country. Okay, so apply as a data frame method, what does it do? It applies a function along either axis of a data frame, okay? So I'm going to actually use a subset of this data frame. I'm going to say drinks.loc. I want uh, all columns and, oh, sorry, all rows. And I want the beer servings through wine servings columns, OK? So this is the data frame we are working with, OK? So what am I going to do if I do dot apply here? I'm using it as a data frame method, not a series method. I'm applying it to the entire data frame. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say apply max axis equals zero. Now what am I saying? I'm saying uh, I want the apply method to travel on axis zero, which is this direction, the down direction. Okay. And I want you to apply the max function, Python's max function. So apply it in this direction, okay? And here's what results. Beer servings, 376. Spirit, 438. Wine, 370. So it figured out the max value in each of those columns because it was operating over axis 0, okay? So uh, now we're going to change it to axis equals 1. Okay, and that will be, I want the max value in each row because axis equals one goes this direction, okay? So now we see the max value in those three columns is zero, 132, 25, 312. So those are the results we are seeing here, okay? Uh, and I will show you one other trick um, I use uh, quite a bit, which is um, sometimes you don't care about the maximum value in a row, but you want to know which column is the maximum. This is where uh, np.argmax is super useful. So I run that, and this tells me that, um, well, there is no which is largest for Afghanistan. Well, um, any of them, but it'll default to the first. So it says beer servings is the largest here. Spirit servings is the largest for the second. Beer servings is the largest for the third. Wine servings for the fourth, etc. So that's a neat little trick you can do with np.argmax. Okay. All right. Uh, finally, let's get into apply map. So we covered map, which is a series method. We covered apply as a series method. And we covered apply as a data frame method. So now let's get to apply map, which is also a data frame method. Okay. So um, I'm just going to show you one example here. And uh, what apply map does, so let me change that, apply map. What apply map does is to apply a function to every element of a data frame, okay? Every element of a data frame, okay? It doesn't go this direction or this direction. It applies it to every element, okay? 
So for instance, if I do apply map float, it will change every element in this data frame to a floating point. It's actually starting out as an integer, changes to a floating point, okay? Now, you can actually use this to overwrite the existing data frame columns, okay? Um, so I'll just show you if, uh, if you just say um, what we want is just drinks.loc, all this stuff equals drinks.loc, the rest, then um, we can do drinks.head, and we will see that now the data frame has changed from integers to floating point numbers, and uh, we have accomplished our objective in that case. Okay. So uh, there's no bonus for today, but as I said, I have three important announcements for you. Number one, uh, this is actually going to be the last video in the Pandas Q&A series for now, okay? Now, why is that? Well, each video takes me between four and eight hours to create, uh, and I have some other projects to focus on right now, so I'm not able to devote that time for the time being. Uh, however, I might be creating more videos in this series later on, so please keep asking questions, please post in comments, I will be happy to interact with you there and keep answering your questions that way, okay? So, uh, announcement number two. Uh, I have other videos you can watch. So if you didn't know, this is video number 30 in this series. So there's 29 other videos. Uh, I have a video series called Introduction to Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn. That's almost seven hours long. Um, I have a very popular series called Introduction to Git and GitHub. Um, and I have some other videos. I will link to all of this in the description below this video, okay? And finally, uh, third announcement, um, if you didn't know, I teach online courses in data science and machine learning with Python, okay? If you like this video series, you will love my courses. So what do I want you to do? I would encourage you to sign up for my email newsletter right now, okay? There's a link in the description below for how to sign up. Uh, what do you get by signing up? Number one, you'll get priority access to my future courses. Uh, number two, you'll get access to exclusive content I don't share publicly and a lot of other stuff, okay? So please do sign up for my newsletter. Um, that is it. So thank you so much for joining me for this entire series. Uh, it has been a real pleasure teaching you. Um, so take care, and I hope to see you again soon.